Just a little warning here that I'm not going to be playing as well as I did in the previous teams because, well, as you can see, this is my first time ever playing the game. Team Rose was obviously the team that I started out with. And there's a lot to adjust to because there's so many different things that you can do in the level because of the three character gameplay. And that's not a bad thing when you get used to it. I like how the, the, the enemies, they have health bars that show you exactly how much health they have left. That's something that generally games don't do. Like, the Werehog brings a huge focus on combat back, and so does 06, but they show health bars that don't have numbers on them. So it's not very obvious how much damage each attack does. Of course, well, I, I don't really like how you, you move too far to the left and too far to the right in the car. It doesn't really control well, but it doesn't actually need to because it's not like you have to really try hard to stay in the narrow area that it's going down. It goes down a scripted path. Like, the car in Seaside Hill is extremely scripted. You don't have to do anything. It's only later that it that you actually have to worry about it. And even then, it kind of turns for you. So, you only have to worry about jumping at the right times. If, if a certain character gets knocked off it, uh, I'll talk more about that later, because I don't, even I don't remember the exact, the exact consequences for losing each partner. I just know that losing the speed type makes you go slower, which you think would actually be good, since, well, it's a fun thrill ride for Seaside Hill, but when you actually need to jump over stuff to dodge stuff, then you don't really want to go fast. See, I wouldn't have had a problem here if I actually knew that I could control the camera by turning it. But I had to backtrack towards the camera because I didn't know that I could backtrack towards... I didn't know that I could turn it around at all. It isn't until... It isn't until Grand Metropolis with Team Rose that they actually tell you that you can turn the camera around. So I didn't know that I could do it at all. It is a nice touch that they actually bother to have Cheese the Chow with cream. Like, you, you'd expect, like, Cheese the Chow is used as Cream's solo melee attack. She throws him at the enemies. Which you'd expect to be even more broken in 3D than in 2D because there's multiple different directions to go. But you don't get to take advantage of it much because you're barely ever alone with Cream, if at all. Amy doesn't have a triangle jump, which is pretty disappointing because it's a pretty fun ability to use. Compare that to Espio, who his special ability is that he can actually stick on walls infinitely, which is probably a nice nod to Knuckles Chaotix, where he could walk on the walls, so he was the best wall climber. Unless you played as Mighty and you knew how to jump up walls, which I don't blame you for not knowing because it's pretty unintuitive, but... Once you know how to do it, he's easily the best for climbing up walls. Seaside Hill is pretty fun. Although I had, like, like as usual, as I explained before, I had a lot of issues with it when I first played the game. Too many icons, too many, too many areas where there are multiple icons at once, which is overstimulating for a first-time player. This is... This, this is easily the worst special stage in Sonic history. Your controls are so slippery. You, you move so far to left and right that it's actually better to only focus on pressing left and right. Don't hold the control stick forwards to go forwards because you're going to go forwards automatically anyways. So you can make the controls a little better by just focusing on left and right. But even then, you move so far left and right that you can very easily go past the balloons that you're trying to go into to get boost. But the other thing is, it's boost. Like, it's 3D boost gameplay long before Unleashed came out. It really makes me wonder what the game would have been like if this was how the game was. Like, the levels. 
obviously with better controls. Like, this desperately needed to have the quick step in it. You could have easily had the quick step on the L and R buttons, and that would have made this a lot easier. The walls are extremely sticky. Like, it's very easy to get caught in a corner and lose all of your momentum, and it's very easy to end up on the ceiling or trapped on the walls. And then you end up having to jump and fall off because there's, there's never any... There's never any balloons to go into on the ceilings. So there's no point at all to staying on the walls, which is why it's stupid that there's this glitch that forces you to cling on to them. And then you lose all your momentum when you jump off them. I like these things where you just get sent through them really fast and a cool thrill ride, rainbow rings and everything. But this, this special stage is just a mess. I hate how the Act 1 special stages just give you stupid extra lives. When you don't really need it with Team Rose. I mean, I think lives carry over between all teams, so this would be a good way to grind lives. Provided you can beat a level without getting hit and losing your special stage key, which is a really arbitrary restriction. But another thing is, I'm confused about whether you should be mashing the B button or not. Because Clement, he mashed the B button and he found it easier. The the argument towards mashing the B button is that, well, you run out, like, you boost with B, and then you run out of boost energy. And so, you're holding B still. Ugh, I hate these checkpoints. I hate how it's so easy to run past them because they're just tiny little spears, like in Rush. Which is especially glaring with the, the slightly more slippery controls. And you saw me do a stupid hammer spin attack when I was trying to do the rocket excel. Like, obviously Amy must have the rocket excel since all Chow tells you about it in Seagate. But it's harder to do it with her. Because if you don't hold beef long enough, I think, then you'll just do a stupid momentum destroying tornado hammer attack, which is utterly worthless. I don't know why they put it in the game. But yeah, about the special stages, I think it might be better to just mash the B button because if you just hold B, then you you won't go as fast on average because you won't, it's not like you'll be perpetually boosting because you'll hold B, you'll run out of boost energy, and then even though you're still holding B when you run into boost orbs to get more boost energy, you're just going to not start boosting again, even though you're still holding B. You have to let go of B and press it again in order to actually start boosting again, which is stupid. And so it feels more like you're going to run out of boost energy constantly if you just hold it down. But I've also heard from Exo Paraline Gamer that if you just mash the B button, then you won't move as fast. And it gets easier if you don't mash it. I don't know, I never bothered beating all the special stages. What's weird is that special stage 3 is ridiculously hard. At the very least, Casino Park is not exactly combat filled, so it's, it's hard to lose a special stage ring. But it's such a tedious level to play, and you're forced to play it to get to Special Stage 3. Because each Chaos Emerald is restricted to a certain level. See, this is one of the only instances where the speed is slippery. And even then, there's walls stopping you. So does it really matter that you're running around all over the place? No, because there's walls that stop you. I kind of like how Amy and Cream are just riding on top of Big's shoulders. I don't really like the fact that Big has to be with them. Like, why would they hang out with him? I mean, he's a fisherman. Like, of course, I can't imagine they wouldn't be so judgmental as to shun him for being stupid and having a really, really stupid voice. I can imagine that Cream would be that nice, but they have nothing in common with him. And you think that he would just want to be fishing. The explanation for why he's hanging out with them, I guess, is just that he's looking for Froggy. Like, that's his motivation. And Cream obviously wants to find Chocola, because apparently now she has a second Chow for some reason. 
Why couldn't it just be that she wants to go on the adventure because Amy is her friend? That would have been great. Unfortunately, Amy's motivation is that she's chasing after Sonic and trying to oppress him. That's it. Yeah, I'm not going to show the bosses again. There's really no point to it. God, Cream's voice is annoying. I like that line from Amy. Is Cream being sarcastic? I hope so. But the problem is her acting doesn't make it obvious enough. I guess it was supposed to be subtle. Like, I would like the idea that, that Cream is very subtly sarcastic against Amy, and in battle it is obvious that that she's kind of the only sane man to Amy, but in battle, Amy doesn't really care about Cream at all. Unfortunately, like, like if Cream is supposed to be the little sister figure to Amy, like her equivalent to Tails, which makes sense since she's a female Sonic essentially, but she doesn't have heartwarming big sister little sister moments with Cream. Okay, so it, it is. I thought that it was only past Team Rose that you could make the Glowy Rose appear again after they had their energy siphon, but apparently that's something that happens after Team Rose. If apparently that's something that happens to Team Rose as well. I don't know why I forgot about that gimmick. Like, the thing is that Team Rose's levels, in addition to being shorter, they're also sometimes lacking clear set pieces like that the other levels had. Like Frog Forest, it doesn't have the the growing platforms from the rain for Team Rose. Yeah, as you can see, it is kind of... I'm obviously not playing this with codes. Like, Team Rose's playthrough will be entirely code-free. It's only later that I decided to use codes because, well, I already showed off a playthrough without codes, so I'm technically showing what the game is normally like. And, I, I, again, I just want to make things more convenient for me. Especially with Team Dark, where it takes... Slow down. Where it takes longer to actually defeat the enemies. So I, I like Team Rose a lot. The problem is that they're a team of annoying voices. So it, it's really... That and the fact that I really don't like Big, it's just not very charming playing as them. So it, 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 it has an appeal problem. Gameplay-wise, it's the best team in the game because the levels are the shortest. Although, sometimes they can be too short, like with Mystic Mansion. But... Ultimately, I just prefer Team Sonics because their interactions are so much more charming. And, yeah, see, this is where I finally found out for the first time that this actually has the best camera system in the Dreamcast era. Because you can, you can rotate the camera and you can move around without snapback. So that's pretty cool. It's a really good thing that they tell you that. But they should have told you that earlier. But yeah, I prefer Team... Rose's levels, but unfortunately you can't turn off the annoying voices of Big and Cream. And I love the interaction between Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles and how they're on an adventure together. It really feels like they're on an adventure together. So I just prefer Team Sonic levels. Like Mystic Mansion is way too short for Team Rose. I know that sounds crazy because Mystic Mansion isn't that great of a level, but still. So, it's obviously Team Chaotix that is the really bad team in the game. Although, the good thing about Team Chaotix is that you keep collectibles when you die. It's also like, they seem to save the exact time of the last collectible you got. And that's why when I die in Team Chaotix in Mystic Mansion, I actually restarted from the very beginning of the level, but I still had... 35 seconds on timer. That's because it was 35 seconds on timer when I put out the last torch that I put out. So Amy has a tornado hammer, which is it's like the tornado attack, but she sends the tornado in front of her like a projectile. And it feels weird using it on tornado poles because you'd, you'd expect 
that the tornado she sends out would not be carrying her friends with her. Like, you'd think that the tornado would just go forwards, hit the pole, and then that would be it. It makes a lot more sense tornadoing up poles with the other characters. On the bright side, her, her being able to send the tornado out in front of her makes her a lot more useful in character battles. You could just stand still and use a tornado hammer. With the other characters, you have to stand, you have to, you have to go to the center of the arena. We could probably spin up that pole I really wish, like, like again, I don't like Cream's voice this game. I really wish that you could just, just turn the character banter off if you wanted to. And, or at the very least, if the character banter only showed up when you first played the levels, and after that you could turn it off. So when SBO says about Eggman, definitely an agent, a relative perhaps. I think it would have been much more interesting if SBO was right and it really wasn't Eggman. If it really was a uh, relative or agent of Eggman who was guiding them to save Eggman. The problem there is, is it creates a plot hole because how would anyone know that Eggman is trapped in a safe, aside from Eggman himself, when Metal Sonic has been impersonating him the whole game? And why would anyone want to help Eggman get free other than Eggman himself if none of the robots are aware that Eggman is being trapped, he's being impersonated? But still, it would have been more interesting, I guess. Because we would have seen another relative of Eggman. So far, the only, re the only relatives of Eggman we've ever seen are... Maria and Gerald, who are both dead. And Snively, which is a character that's not in the game. Which is good because Snively is completely unlikable. Guess we could have tried harder. I like... I like Amy's... I'm really grown accustomed to Amy's, like, valley girl voice. Like, I used to be annoyed with how it sounded older, but now I really like Amy's new voice. But now I really like Amy's voice in this game. It sounds like the previous voice. It doesn't sound like Minnie Mouse. Like, I just like it. She's a pretty charming character in this game. Even though she still has her Mary Sonic obsession and... She shows the first signs of being flanderized in this game. At the very least, she really has come into her own, what with finally becoming the leader of her own team. And actually being a Sonic clone, being a lot more powerful than she usually is.